lucky. Can I try it on? Sure. What I really want is one of my own. Well, you might be just a little bit young. I know. Dear little Sandy, she's just a child. Why, do you know how old I am? I'm practically nine. Why, in China and in Borneo and India and places like that, girls already have husbands at my age. Mm. I'd get married tomorrow if I could find someone like you. <laughs> Can't I please try the ring? Why, just put it on your finger. But what on my finger? The ring. I don't have the ring. Sandy, tell me the truth. Didn't you see anything right there? There wasn't anything to see. You hurt. I'm sorry. Well, I'll, I'll find the ring later. You run along now, Sandy. I, I better finish my practice and... Goodbye, right, Sandy. I'll see you later. All right, bye. I know now you've come back. But it won't do you any good, because I'm going to marry Meg. Now, what'd you do with the ring, Vi? Vi, what did you do with that ring? Hard, getting ready for your concert. You've had a lonely life here on the island away from all your musician friends. It's been getting you down. But I'll take care of all that once we're married. Maybe you better tell your mother that the wedding's on again. I never told her it was off. You're pretty sure of yourself, aren't you? You know, the first thing you're going to do is have a long vacation. A whole month honeymoon in Europe. Uh-uh. You know how many hit records I'd have to sell to pay for that? Dad's footing the bill. It's his wedding present to us. He wanted to tell you himself, but he won't be here to write before the wedding. And when we get back, I'm going to have a big party so I can get to know all your friends. Big party? We'll be living in a three-room apartment. Mother and Daddy won't mind if we use their house in Bel Air. They say now that I'm getting married, it's too big for them anyway, so they'll be turning it over to us for good one of these days. Are you trying to spoil me? There's nothing I'd like better. Come on up to the house a minute. I want you to see something. What? My wedding gown. Isn't that supposed to be bad luck? You're not superstitious about things like that, are you? No. I'm not superstitious. My garden's full of roses this month, and it seemed about time to bring you some fresh ones, so... Hi. Hello. Well, hello, stranger. Hi, Kate. Where have you been keeping yourself, lady? Uh, Some beautiful gifts have arrived, and you haven't seen any of them. Hey, look at this. But you're a dear anyway. Champagne. Fix your drink. Mmm. <laughs> look, another one. Uh-oh, there's my girl. Hi, pal. Hi. Is everything made up with you and Meg? Well, I'm working on it. 
Hi, Miss Ellis. Tom. Another pair. People must think newlyweds live on lettuce by candlelight. This makes nine pairs of candlesticks and 12 salad bowls and more coming every time the mail boat arrives. Meg got her wedding gown today and Tom, it's simply a dream. What a bride goes through to make herself attractive for you men. It took three fittings to get the bodice right and three layers of net to make the skirt full enough. Well, hardly seems worth it. After all, I'm only marrying her, so you'll be my mother-in-law. Sandy, see if there's a window open. There's a cold draft all of a sudden. Sweet smell. Mm, must be the fresh roses. My roses never smelled like that. It's a woman's perfume. Help me make room for these, dear. In my day, it wasn't candlesticks, it was teaspoons. Mr. Hubbard and I received no less than 78 of them when we were married. Maybe that's a reason for his attitude. When he went back to the mainland, he said he was going to go right to the office and stay there until the wedding. I'm sure you'll never treat your wife like that, will you, Tom? Oh, will you? He isn't here, Mother. Where is he? I think Meg took him to look at her dress. My wedding dress! What is it? What did she find? Seaweed. Yes, Mrs. Ellis. I'm in here. I brought you some honey. Don't get up. I'll just put it on the bar here. Thank you, Mrs. Ellis. I really brought the honey only as an excuse, because I knew you were upset. Tom, there's nothing supernatural about what happened to Meg's dress. There must be a logical explanation. I know, I know. That seaweed, it's just like that Samuels boy. There have been no recent deaths, Tom. No. Anyway, I'm sure of one thing. I've had enough of her. Who are you talking about? Oh, a, a friend I used to have, a girl named Vi. She came over here to the island to see me. We, well, we quarreled up in the lighthouse. And, well, at any rate, she went back to the mainland. Are you sure that's what happened? What do you mean, am I sure? Well, maybe she didn't go back to the mainland. Maybe this girl, Vi, is still here and is playing tricks to get even. Now, where do you suppose a woman could hide on this island? Who's hiding? Never mind, Sandy. Things will work out. You'll see. There are some things that grown-ups don't want children to know about, Sandy. Those are always the most interesting things. Who is Tom looking for? Never mind. Betty's looking for at the lighthouse. He's always hanging around there. The lighthouse is a very dangerous place, Sandy. It'll soon be torn down. That doesn't keep people from going there. But you mustn't go there, Sandy. Not ever. Run along home now. Come on, Fritz. 